to the Oaklands YouTube channel. In today's quilting tutorial, we're going over month five of the Cotton Cuts 2021 Sparkle and Shine Mystery Quilt. So for this month, it's actually a pretty easy one. There's not a whole lot to this one. So if you were needing a month to just like bang, 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 get something done nice and quick, this is your month. This is gonna be a good one. So let's start with the small. For the small, I am doing the garnet color and we're gonna make four of these little blocks. See, I have already made three of them, so we'll make the fourth one together, but it's just this, it's just this cute little block. It's a very simple block, right? We have two half square triangles, and we have two just basic squares here. You can make a whole quilt off of just this block. So if you love this design, when you kind of mix this all up together in a lot of blocks, it can create some really cool like abstract looks. So I just wanted to let you know, this is a really cool block for a whole quilt, but for our mystery quilt, size small. We're just gonna make four of these, super easy. For the large, I'm doing the quartz colorway and we're gonna make two of these blocks. I love this colorway so much. Obviously, I love my bright colors. And then we're gonna make one of another block, but since I make it with you, we're gonna make it together on the channel. I have no idea if it's gonna be easy or hard. It's probably going to be very simple. All these blocks are very simple, but we'll make it together. So we'll start with the small and then we'll move on to the large and then we'll be done. Very, very easy month. So if you're new to the Oak Lords YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, anything at all, leave them down in the comment section down below. The sign up for this is no longer on the site. However, you can email them and you can still join in on the quilt along. If you'd like, I'll have the email information down in the description of this video. All right, let's get started. Okay, so for the small, what we wanna do is just lay out our blocks like we want them in the end. This is a very small block, so this is not that complicated, but you can accidentally mix up the direction of these triangles, so pay attention to that. Your Fs are gonna be pointing towards one another in the middle, and your E triangles are going to be pointing away from the center, just like that, nice and easy. So if you're building this, you're probably building all four at once, just lay them all out and just do each step all together so you don't have to do one block at a time right so the first thing we want to do is work with our little triangles here so i've got my pin dish and i'm just going to take my triangles and lay them right sides together and then i'm going to pin right along that edge and i'll do the same with all of my triangle units my e and f triangle units okay now take your little triangle units to the sewing machine and let's sew along this pinned edge at a scant quarter inch seam allowance. All right, once you have those sewn, just lay your triangle units so that the wrong side of F is facing up, and then just press along the back of those seams, fold it up, use your fingers to press right along that edge, and then use your iron to press this down nice and flat. Just be very gentle because these can be bias edges here. You don't want to stretch out your block too much. And then I like to give them a quick press on the back as well. All right, once those are done, just lay your unit again like you're gonna have it in the end. There we go. And now we're just going to attach our C squares to the F side of our triangle. So I'm just going to kind of lay it out like it's gonna be in the end and fold them right sides together just like that, and then I'll pin along that midpoint line between them, so this line right here that's connecting them, fold together. All right, now let's take these to the sewing machine and sew along these pinned edges at a scant quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, once you have these sewn, lay your unit so that the back of the half square triangles are wrong side up. And just like before, I'm gonna press the seams while they're closed, and then I'll Fold this up so that seam's gonna go behind that F triangle. And I'm just gonna gently finger press, trying to keep everything nice and straight. And then I'll press it with my iron. And then I'll just give them a quick press on the back just to really hold that seam down. All right, now all we have to do is line these up like they're going to be in the end, just like that. And then fold them right sides together. And you should notice that the seams are going in opposite directions. So the top seam for me is going to the left, the bottom seam is going to the right. And that way I can just kind of slide my seams so that they kiss right in the middle, add a pin there, and then pin right along the edge out to the sides. 
And that's how we get those little perfect points right in the middle by nesting our seams, kind of hugging them around one another. All right, now let's just sew along this pinned edge at a scant quarter inch seam allowance. And now we're going to press the seam and the seam's gonna be behind the top. So if you have a preference on which row is the bottom, which row is the top, the seam's gonna be behind the top row. So just press along that middle seam to get it all nice and flat. Flip it over and give it a decent press as well. We've got a little bit of bulk on these corners here. And there you go. Just make four of these blocks for the small quilt and that's all you have. This should be very quick. Very quick, very easy, very, very cute. So next we have the large. We're gonna have a total of three blocks, two of these and one of another. So let's just go ahead and make the other one of these since, since I know how to do that one. We're gonna lay out all of our units. All right, so here are all the pieces for this first block laid out just like it's going to be in the end. And the first thing we want to do is work on these little triangles over here. So we're going to take our E and F units and we're going to lay them right sides together and then just pin along that long edge where they're connected. Do this for all of your E, F units for this first block. And now we can take these to the sewing machine and sew along the pinned edge at a scant quarter inch seam allowance. All right, once you have that sewn together, lay your units so that the wrong side of F is wrong side up and then just press on those seams real quick. And then use your fingers to press the seam so that it's behind your F triangle and then press that edge gently with your iron, making sure you're not stretching anything. You're trying to keep everything as a nice square, not a wobbly square. And then I like to just press the back real quick to help push that seam down nice and flat. Okay, so now I'm putting my little blocks back like they go. But what you're going to do now is you're going to attach your C blocks to the side of your F block. So each of them need to be kind of laid out like this. See when I rotate this? They all need to be like this where you have your E triangle pointing away, your F triangles pointing towards your C block, and we're going to just lay our C against our little half square triangle and then pin along that edge. Do this for all of your units. If you're making all of them at once, you should have four. Now let's take these to the sewing machine and sew along these pinned edges at a scant quarter inch seam allowance. All right, so once these are sewn together, take your units and lay them so that the wrong side of C is up. And we're gonna just press along that seam once again. And now we're pressing the seam behind that C square. Nice and gentle. Just making these cute little rectangles. So line up your units so that the F triangles are pointing towards one another in the center. And then let's just fold these together, right sides together. And your seams should be going in opposite directions so that we can just kind of snug them in. They just kind of slide into one another. And we nest those, which gives us those perfect points. So I always pin the center first, and then I pin out towards the sides. All right, let's go sew along this edge at a scant quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, so now whenever we press this, we're gonna press the seam behind the bottom. So if you have a preference on which one of these is gonna be the top and the bottom, think about that now because we want the seam to go behind the bottom rectangle. And then again, I like to press it on the back to hold down those seams right, right on the ends where they kind of bulk up. All right, most of your block is done. Just set that to the side. And now take your E and A units, and we're just going to sew right along the middle here. So your E unit is gonna be on top, your A unit is on the bottom. Let's just fold them right sides together, and then just pin along that edge. And now let's just sew along this pinned edge at a scant quarter inch seam allowance. Now lay your sewn unit so that the wrong side of E is up and let's just press along that seam. And we're pressing the seam behind the E unit. So for me, that's the darker fabric. Just try to get this nice and straight. You don't wanna have like a wavy line here. And just gently press it with your iron. There we go. Okay, now when we line this up, we should have this just like this. Remember the seam 
on this little square over here is going to be towards the bottom row and then the seam over here on this bigger rectangle is towards the top so they should be going in opposite directions right so when we fold these right sides together right along that line the seams should be able to nest in with one another by going in opposite directions so I'm just gonna pin at the middle and then pin out towards the sides and there we go. Now let's just go sew along this edge at a scant quarter inch seam allowance. Once you have it all sewn together, you're going to press the seam allowance behind the long rectangles. So just lay your unit so that the long rectangles are wrong side up. Press along that seam. And then just use your fingers to press the seam behind those rectangles. And then just give it a quick press with your iron. All right, there we go. So you're going to have two of those for the large quilt. Now let's make the third block. So I have not made this block yet, so I'm just going to quickly lay it out the way I think it's going to go. And you know what? I think I might actually be missing a couple of things. Okay, so I have not made this one yet, and it actually looks like I'm missing a couple of pieces, which happens sometimes. So if you're missing any pieces, you can contact Cotton Cuts, and they will send you the correct pieces but since i'm doing a video we're going to have to just wing it so i'm gonna line up what i can with what i have so you may have noticed that last month i actually had to supplement another couple of pieces because they were missing so it happens just just let them know if if the pieces that you need are not included and they'll they'll send it out to you Okay, so I used some deductive reasoning to try to kind of guess what the measurements for these A rectangles over here are going to be. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is start with the center, and we're going to combine our A and E units together. So, see how I kind of separated them like this? We're just going to lay them right sides together, and try to make sure you remember which edge needs to be sewn. So for me, it's this bottom right edge. I'm going to pin that together. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm just going to lay my triangles right sides together. And then pin along the joining edge. Okay, now let's take these to the sewing machine and sew along these edges at a scant quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, now let's lay them so that the wrong side of E is facing up. And then let's just press along these seams. And we want the seams to go behind the E triangles. Do this for both of your units. And if you'd like, you can give them a press on the back as well to get that seam as flat as possible. Okay, now putting them back together, we're gonna sew these two triangles together, just like this along the long bottom edges. So fold them right sides together and your seams should be going in opposite directions so that we can just slide them together, nest them in. And then the Long edge should be the same size. You shouldn't have anything wonky going on just yet. We don't have that many seams. Now let's pin along that edge. And we can sew along the pinned edge at a scant quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, now you're going to press this seam behind whichever side you want to be on the left hand side. So I'm just going to press it along the triangle that I happen to have here. And then I'll make sure it's facing the left hand side when we lay it back out. All right, so the center's good. Now let's work on these little pink flying geese over here. So you're gonna take your D triangle and then take one of your small A triangles and lay it right side down. You can start on the left or the right, whichever you prefer. And then just pin these two triangles together. We're gonna do one triangle at a time. So let's grab the other D one and again, I'm starting on the right, so I'm just going to line it up on the top right, fold it right sides together. Now let's sew along both of these pinned edges at a scant quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, once those are sewn in place, we're going to press the seam behind the smaller A triangles. So just gently finger press that seam so it goes behind that smaller triangle. You can give them a press on the back as well. Okay, now we're just going to add these small triangles on the other side. So, taking one of our little almost done flying geese, lay it right side up. Take one of your remaining small A triangles and lay it right side down on the top left edge, or the top right edge if that's what you have left, and pin together. Do this for both units. 
All right, now let's sew along both of these pinned edges at a scant quarter inch seam allowance. And then just like before, we're gonna press the seam behind the smaller A triangle. So this should be nice and easy, shouldn't have any big bulk here yet. Now let's press along the back as well. Now take your little flying goose and lay it right side up so that the point is pointing up towards the top. And now take one of your A units that is the rectangle and we're just going to lay this right sides together. I think I, I think I figured out the right size for this. I think they're supposed to be the same size. So if you're missing this piece and you don't want to wait for them to send you one, just make this flying goose here and then measure this out and then that's probably, I think that's the same size as the rectangle that might be missing. But I know some of us, like once we get started sewing, we don't wanna kind of stop halfway through, so. Okay, so do this for both of your flying geese and A rectangle units. All right, now let's take these to the sewing machine and sew along both of these edges at a scant quarter inch seam allowance. All right, now lay your block so that the back of the rectangle is wrong side up. And now let's press that seam and we're gonna press the seam behind that A rectangle, just like that. All right, now we just have to put it all together. So take your center unit and lay it right side up. Take your little flying geese rectangle units and lay those right side up. And this is how it's all gonna be laid out. So now we just have to sew each of these on. So I'm gonna take one, fold it right sides together, line up this right edge over here, and they should be the exact same size. I'm gonna pin along this edge. And now I'll sew along this edge at a scant quarter inch seam allowance. All right, once you have one side sewn on, lay this so that all those little triangles, that middle unit is laying wrong side up because we wanna press the seam behind these middle triangles here. So then just fold it up and finger press it. And then I'm gonna give it a press on the back as well just to hold it down. All right, and finally, we just have to do the same thing on the left side, so I'm just going to flip these right sides together. Again, this edge right here doesn't have any seams in it, so it should be the exact same size. You shouldn't have to worry at all about this being different sizes. So let's pin these together. And finally, let's sew along this pinned edge at a scant quarter inch seam allowance. And last, just lay your unit wrong side up so that again, that center block is wrong side up and let's press the seam behind that middle triangle. Nice and easy, should be a nice easy block. Okay, so the pattern does tell you how big this should measure in the end, and since I had to kind of guess on these rectangles here, this does measure the finished size. So yes, these rectangles are the same size as this flying goose, just in case you need to make your own. All right, what did you think? It was a pretty easy month, right? Especially if you're doing the small quilt. If you're doing a small quilt, you just got four of these little cutie patooties and you're done. These are really cute. Even if you're doing the large quilt, it's pretty easy. These are bigger blocks, but they don't really have a whole lot of pieces. Look how fun these are. I love this colorway so much. And then here's the one we had to build together on camera. Like I said, these rectangles were not included in my batch this month, but you know what, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you participated in the Oakley Roots block party, you know how much I love a scrappy quilt. I love scrappy quilts. And yes, I love them because you can use up scraps, but really the reason I love a scrappy quilt so much is because they're all going to be different. I love my quilt to be personalized for me. I don't want it to look like everybody else's. In a quilt along like this where all the material is supplied, yes, your quilt is going to end up looking like everybody else who picked the large colorway that you picked or the small colorway. You know what I mean? It's gonna look the same. And a lot of people love that. And I totally understand because it makes it a lot easier to know this quilt's gonna look good, right? Because when you do scrappy, you're not so sure that what you picked is gonna look good. At least this way you know it's gonna look good. But I have a tiny bit, a tiny bit of customization in mind by these missing pieces. And even if you didn't miss the pieces, if you just wanna switch it out and use your own cut of fabric, definitely do that. This is my little itty bitty stamp on my quilt so that I know mine is just a tiny bit different than everybody else who's doing the large quartz. But it will still look the same because this fabric, I mean, it pretty much looks the same as the white fabric that's provided. So I hope you love sewing along with me today. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much to Cotton Cuts for allowing me to participate in this sew along. It's been so fun. We only have a few more months left and then we're gonna be all done. I'm so interested to see how all this comes together. I am, I'm fascinated by this. 
Make sure you're keeping all of your quilt blocks in their associated bags. The pattern even suggests things like labeling 15A, 15B, because you will have to label these, so then we put them all together, we know what's going on. I am keeping all of my blocks in their month's bags, but I'm actually not labeling them, which I think, I think I'm gonna kinda kick myself in the butt for that later, so I might wanna spend some time and go through my patterns and make sure they're all labeled appropriately so we can put it all together and make our beautiful quilts. I hope you're having a great day. I hope you have a fantastic rest of the week. Get out there and make something. Bye guys.